Welcome everyone to our Wednesday Bible study. Hope everything is going well for you. Hope you have your Bible nearby and we will continue our study tonight in the, the book of Philippians and specifically in chapter number four. One verse tonight in Philippians four. I told you we might be camped out uh, <laughs> in this uh, chapter for a little while and it's got, it's so uh it's so enriching and, and can be so much uh, faith building that uh, there's no need to, to rush through these. I mean, the virus isn't going anywhere, right? So we can just we can just camp out in uh, Philippians chapter 4. But I uh, send you greetings from the Hickory Knoll Church of Christ. And we are thankful that you have a desire to open God's Word and to uh, learn and to study. And hopefully we will each be uh, challenged by uh, his word uh, tonight. Uh, are you ready? Philippians chapter 4 verse number 5. Paul writes, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. That's what I want us to wrap our minds around this evening. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Now, the topic of gentleness is one that is very well known in the scriptures, both Old and New Testament. A quick survey of some passages in the New Testament that talk about the importance of gentleness. Jesus himself is gentle, Matthew 11, verse 29. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. The idea of gentleness or the, the discipline of gentleness is one of the, uh, is, a, is a part of the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5, verse 22 through 23. Uh, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. Paul says a little bit later in Galatians 6, verse number 1, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Uh, gentleness is one of the qualifications of, of becoming an elder, and that's what is written in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 3, as far as not being violent, not being greedy, but rather being gentle, not quarrelsome, not coveting, coveting others as well. And James says it this way in James chapter 3, verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. I don't know if you can hear the thunder in the background. I do find it, it kind of uh, interesting that I'm talking tonight about uh, gentleness in, in the midst of a, a, a good old South Louisiana thunderstorm. And uh, hopefully that won't be a much of a uh, distraction. So coming back to Philippians chapter 4, verse number 5, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near now uh, by definition and you can look at some of the other uh, bible uh, translations uh, niv uses the word gentleness uh, the english standard version uses the word reasonableness so let your reasonableness be evident to all uh, old kjv let your moderation be evident to all. Dictionary.com, the word gentle is defined as kindly, not severe, not rough, not violent, okay? And in the verb form, gently is to tame, to calm, to even pacify at times. Uh, Eric's translation or one idea possibly is um, is balance. And those of you that uh, know me, uh, I, you know that balance is one of the, the big things that I, I try to uh, to emphasize and, and focus, not going to one extreme or the other, 
but to, uh, to be uh, balanced, to be reasonable, uh, to be moderate, uh, to be gentle. Now, uh, in order for us to be gentle, we have to have an understanding of what others are, what's going on in our lives and uh, what others are doing to us and how we are, are treating others. Now, you think about all that was going on in the life of the Apostle Paul. Uh, Paul potentially had a lot to be mad about. I mean, for one, he's in prison for his faith. He had been arrested and he's writing this letter to the to the church in Philippi from jail. Uh, Paul in his life as a as an apostle, as a child of God now, a follower of Christ, uh, he had been arrested, he'd been beaten, he'd been kicked out of town, he'd been rejected, he'd had uh, the, that thorn in the side, whatever that was, it was certainly a bothersome to him. Paul certainly had a lot to be mad about but he also had a lot to be glad about as well. Uh, last week we talked some about, uh, notice the first uh, a few verses in Philippians 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And as you think about gentleness, I want us to obviously think about being gentle and letting that be evident to all. But I, I want to specifically this evening for a few moments try to connect gentleness to the second sentence in Philippians 4 verse number 5. And that is, the Lord is near. Now, Jesus, has, Jesus is eternal. He's been around since uh, the very beginning. And he uh, became flesh. He, he left heaven and came to this earth and uh, became flesh and he dwelt among us. He lived a perfect life and um, he loved, he served, he cured. Uh, he uh, was able to uh, take our place on the cross. He was tempted in all parts of life yet did not have any sin whatsoever. So he, he goes to the cross and he dies on it for our sins. He's buried uh, in the grave, and then on the third day or the first day of the week, he is he's resurrected from the grave. He is alive, and he has ascended uh, into heaven and now sits at the right-hand side uh, of God. But um, at some point, he is going to return, and it is it's going to be soon. It, it's going to be near. Now, we don't know when that is. Uh, the Bible talks about how uh, one day is as a thousand years, a thousand years as as a day. And I don't know exactly when that will be, if it will be tonight, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, next decade, next century, next millennium. Who knows? But in the context of eternity, the Lord is near the Lord is going to be here soon, and so we want to be ready. Uh, he can uh, come at any time. Uh, there's other scriptures in the New Testament that talk about uh, the return of Christ as a thief in the night, meaning uh, who knows when it's going to be. And, and, and so we need to be uh, ready at any time. And, and so it's interesting that Paul's connecting this idea of gentleness to the return of Christ. And I, uh, I wish we were in a Bible class setting right now because I, in, in where I could, um, you know, open it up to the floor and let you chime in. And, and by all means, if anyone wants to uh, add a comment to the, you know, to the wherever you're watching this link on YouTube or, or Facebook or whatever, feel free or, or text me or call me. Well, let's chat about this. But uh, if I was in a room with a bunch of folks right now, I would ask them, what do you see as the connection between gentleness and the return of Christ? That's what I, I'm trying to, to make sense of, and it's what I'm trying to grapple with right now, and, and hopefully you are as well. The, the value of gentleness in relation to the fact that the Lord is near that he is coming back uh, soon. Uh, here's a statement that I, I wrote uh, a little while ago. No, uh, Paul knew that no matter 
how bad others treated him, he knew that Jesus was coming soon. And that's a fact. And there is nothing that anyone can, can say or do that will change that fact. And you think it's interesting that he talks about gentleness and the, the return of Christ uh, shortly after encouraging, you remember last time, Euodia and Syntyche, whatever that conflict was, uh, that uh, they had the opportunity to work through that and to rejoice in the Lord uh, always. And, and so if we're going to be gentle, we're going, if we're going to have, if we're going to be gentle to others, we must never forget the larger spiritual eternal dynamics going on. Uh, number one, that Jesus loves us, right? Number two, we don't want anything or anyone to, we don't want to do anything. We don't want to do anything that would cause us to uh, to walk away from the Lord, to fall away from the church, to, to to lose our salvation, right? And we're thankful for God's grace and mercy and forgiveness when we fall short. But uh, we want to, uh, we also want to make sure that we have a good, strong influence on others. Uh, being gentle towards others can not only be edifying for us in regards to how we manage our conflict, but it can be evangelistic to others as, uh, as well. We need to stop focusing all the time on how others are treating us. Instead, focus on how we are treating others. Are we just emotionally reactive to everyone that everything that everyone says and does to us? Do we just vent all the time? Do we just lose our temper all the time? Do we just sulk all the time? Do we just uh, become quiet all the time and just distance ourselves and, and remove ourselves? Or uh, and and just um, be consumed with what someone else said to us, what someone else did to us, and just uh, allow that bitterness and, and 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 all of that to just stir and, and settle into our hearts to a point where uh, we're just angry all the time and and are just mean to everyone around us. Or are we focusing instead not on so much what others do to us, but but how we are treating others. Let your gentleness be evident to all. Here's the reality. Every single one of us will one day have to appear before the judgment seats of Christ. And uh, of course, we may die before Jesus comes back. He may come back while we are still alive. But at, at some point, uh, we're all going to have to reckon with the fact that Jesus, his, that his return is near. And, and so I don't want to do anything that is going to damage my relationship with anyone. And, and gentleness um, plays a big part in that. Now, that doesn't mean I'll never be in conflict with anyone. doesn't mean that I'll never have a disagreement with anyone. But it, it's how I conduct myself it's how we as Christians model Christ in our lives and, and allow gentleness to be a defining part of who we are. Uh, by the way, don't ever let anyone uh, uh, let you think that that gentleness is a feminine characteristic and it's not masculine. OK, uh, strong Christian men know how to be gentle uh, as well. This is not just for the ladies. This is for the Christian men uh, as well. Uh, you don't want to do anything to damage your relationship with anyone. In fact, you might very well be the one main person who has the ability to lead someone to Christ. So no matter what it is that's going on in our world, be gentle, knowing that the Lord is near. Be gentle when it comes to coronavirus. Be gentle when it comes to politics and presidential elections. 
be gentle when it comes to civil unrest and difference of opinions on race relations. Be gentle when it comes to umpires. Well, never mind, that one doesn't apply. Just scratch that one from uh, the list. Well, uh, be gentle when it comes to your spouse. Be gentle when it comes to your siblings. Be gentle when it comes to uh, anyone and everyone that you come into contact with in your life. We want to be encouraging, we want to be evangelizing, and gentleness is going to be a key aspect of how successful we are in encouraging others and reaching out to them, knowing that the Lord is alive, that he is at the right hand side of God, and that one day we will all appear before his judgment seats after he returns. I hope this message has been helpful to you. More next time. We'll pick up in Philippians 4 verse 6 and we might get past one verse next time. Who knows? But Philippians 4 verse 5, an awesome passage. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. See you next time.